Welcome to this Learn the Electrics video, the ninth in our 18th edition exam help series. If you are studying for the exam or maybe just wanting to update your knowledge, we are sure that you will find this video both interesting and helpful. This video will look at part three of the wiring regulations. We will look in depth at earthing systems and the types of questions you will be asked in the assessment of characteristics section of the exam. Part 3 begins on page 44 of the Wiring Regulations book. It's just nine pages in length with some very short chapters. However, it relates to an important part of our work, so expect at least six questions on this topic. This equates to 10% of the exam. So, consider understanding where to find the answers quite important. It begins with chapter 30, which briefly describes what each of the following chapters will ask us to consider in relation to electrical installations. Take a mental note that part three of the regulations, this part, has lots of lists. And as I've said many times, exam setters love lists when setting exam questions. You don't need to remember the list in detail, but do take note of where to find the lists. Chapter 31 is the biggest chapter. And as well as lists, it has many drawings that you need to understand. Chapter 31 is all about what the installation is going to be used for. The maximum demand, how many phases, the earthing system, circuit breakers and types of circuits. Look at regulation 311, maximum demand and diversity. A regular question is about diversity. This regulation tells us that in determining maximum demand, diversity may be taken into account. If you need a refresher on diversity, we have a video on this and we will leave a link in the description to this video. Next, the chapter looks at different conductor arrangements. You may be shown a drawing and asked to identify the type of circuit. Here we show a single phase two wire circuit that is typical of domestic and other installations. Notice that the earth or CPC has been left off as the earth is not a current carrying conductor in fault free conditions. Next are two three phase only drawings, star and delta, which some of you will be familiar with if you work with industrial motors. The drawing on the right looks like a delta configuration. That's easy. But the drawing on the left in no way looks like a star. So let me redraw it. This is the same drawing, just shown differently, and now it looks like a star. The centre point, where all the phases are joined, is known as the star point. And you should also be able to recognise this three-phase four-wire supply. Three phases, plus neutral, with the neutral attached at the star point. Next, the chapter looks at types of earthing systems. There are three systems of interest to us. TNS... TNCS and TT. There are two more specialised systems but they are not covered in the wiring regulations. The table on page 47 describes how code letters are used. The code letters that matter to us mean T for Earth. The Latin name for Earth is Terra, a T. N is for neutral. C for combined where the earth and neutral are combined together and use the same conductor, and S is for separated, where the earth and neutral are in separate conductors. Looking at TNS systems first, take the T from the top section, it tells us this is a connection to earth. N from the second section is referring to the neutral, and finally S from the bottom part tells us that they are separate. So we have Earth and neutral separate throughout the system. TNS. Consider TNCS next. T for Earth. N for neutral. C for combined. The Earth and neutral share the same conductor. And then S for separated. At the intake position to the building, the Earth and neutral are given their own conductors that are separate from each other. We now have Earth and neutral are combined and then separated, TNCS. And finally, for us, 
a TT system. T for Earth and again T for Earth. This indicates that the Earth electrode at the installation is electrically independent of the Earth electrode at the supply transformer. There is no copper conductor connecting the two Earths together. We must rely on a connection through the soil or ground. Obviously, this is not as good an Earth connection as the previous two systems, which is why TT systems must be given extra consideration for safety. So we have Earth Rod to Earth Rod or TT. Chapter 61 continues with several schematics of earthing system types. The first one is a TNS system, shown on page 48, and understanding just what they are showing you really helps. Top left in the red box is the supply transformer. This is showing the three phases plus the neutral plus the earth. And at the bottom right, we are boxed around a single phase intake position. To the left is a three phase intake position. And how is the wiring arranged for this single phase installation? We have used a brown wire here to mark the phase conductor to the header and blue for the neutral with the green wire representing the earth conductor. This is a TNS system, so the earth and the neutral are separate throughout. Now we can look at a TNCS system. If you look at the title to this schematic, you'll see that the TNCS system can also be called a PME system. The phase conductor is as before, but now the earth and the neutral leave the supply transformer as one conductor. They are combined, shown here as a dotted blue and green line. Look at the note on the right in the red box. This combined conductor can also be called a pen conductor. And then at the intake position, the earth and the neutral are separated. This is a TNCS system, also called a pen or a PME system. On page 49, we see the TT system. Phase and neutral go to the intake position, but the earth does not. At the supply transformer, there is an earth rod. At the intake position, there is also an earth rod. There is no copper conductor between them. They rely on a connection through the soil. And finally, for chapter 31, take a look also at regulation 313 about supplies and regulation 314, divisions of an installation. They contain lists and exam setters love lists and these lists make popular exam questions. Chapter 32 is very easy. It has moved to part 5 of the wiring regulations and to appendix 5 and you will not be asked questions on this old section in this part of the exam. Chapter 33 next, compatibility. In other words, will your new equipment and wiring affect the older and pre-existing equipment of this installation? And any other nearby installations on the same supply cables? It's a very short section, it's a list, and is very popular for making up exam questions. Chapter 34 is a short chapter on maintainability. It asks the question, who is going to maintain the installation? Are they skilled in electrical maintenance work? Think about safety and reliability of equipment and how to maintain the installation. Chapter 35 looks at safety services. What equipment is supplied for safety? Emergency lighting, fire alarms, etc. And how to keep it energised during a power cut. At first glance, it doesn't look like there's a list here, but there is, and you may be asked questions on this list. Note 2 of Regulation 351 is the list. It is written as a sentence, but it is still a list. Make sure you can find it. And lastly is Chapter 36, Continuity of Service. What circuits must have continuous power, such as life support systems? It could be an oxygen supply in a hospital. It could be heat lamps for animal breeding. It could be ventilation systems for chicken breeding or pumping systems for sewage. Lots of applications have a requirement for continuity of service. So consider how to ensure this. On to questions now. First, 
the answers to last week's video, part 8 of the 18th edition training on fundamental principles. Question 1 was answer C. The answer to question 2 was B. And question 3 was answer D. Hopefully you got 3 out of 3. OK, on to this video's questions and there are 8 questions to have a go at. Remember, the question will always give enough information for you to find the right chapter in part 3. Don't forget to use the part 3 contents list on page 44. Matching the question to one of these sections should take you straight to the answer. Question 1 is about maximum demand. Look at page 44. Maximum demand is listed there and it tells you exactly which regulation to go to for the answer. Question 2 is about earthing systems. Again, how to find it is on page 44. Next, a question on compatibility. Go to page 44 and it will tell you the regulation number for the answer. And question 4 can be treated the same way. Question 5 is a drawing. These should be easy to find in part 3. There are only 9 pages to look through. And if you read the question, certain words also appear on page 44, taking you straight to the correct regulation. Question 6, divisions of an installation. How are you going to find this answer? Question 7 is a not question. You're looking for the most appropriate not answer. Basically, you are word or sentence matching, and the odd one out must be the correct answer. Question 8 is a list of four regulations, which is the only regulation that answers the question. Well, that's it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable, and that you have increased your electrical knowledge. Please click on subscribe below. It will give you access to all of our tech tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next video. By clicking on subscribe, you help us too and we do appreciate that small act. Also, typing in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar will give you access to all of the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.